Hello friends, this is Dr. Kadir, orthopedic surgeon from Chennai. Today we will be discussing about one of the most important examination aspect of a bone tumor case. See, whenever you present a bone tumor case and just after the moment you say your diagnosis, the next question is going to be, how will you manage this patient? And whenever they are starting with that word, how will you manage the patient? Please don't just jump into, uh, for example, if it is a case of an osteochondroma, don't jump into a uh, management like extra periosteal excision of the tumor. No. When they, the moment when they ask for the management, your first answer must be, I would like to confirm my diagnosis with an investigation. And after confirmation of my diagnosis, I would like to investigate further to stage the disease. And based on the consensus, then I would go for the eventual treatment. So that should be the definitive treatment should uh, proceed, uh, proceed only after confirming your diagnosis and after you stage the disease. Clear? Because a bone tumor may be, may be benign or it can be malignant. Uh, there may be various stages at which it, it would have presented to you. So decoding that is very, very important before you telling the treatment options. So today in this session, we will be discussing about how one should examine the x-ray of a bone tumor case okay so uh, uh, in the upcoming slide whenever the x-ray is given to you the first thing you must be telling is don't jump into the diagnosis first start your x-ray by i would like to uh, whenever an x-ray is put up to you try to uh, uh, read the x-ray in this order as given in the slide first try to mention the age for example at least tell whether it is a skeletally mature patient or skeletally immature patient then tell what type of bone what is the bone which is shown in that x-ray for example it may be a femur or pelvis or whatsoever what bone and what joint and tell what type of bone it is it can be a flat bone it can be a uh, a long bone whatsoever so what type of bone it is okay and where is the location of the lesion be precise for example if it is going to be in a long bone be precise whether it is in the diaphysis or epiphysis or it is in the metaphysis then then you start looking to the tumor the tumor may has its own border the tumor may has its own margin so what is a border what are all the types of border we'll be discussing slightly later and then you talk about the covering of the tumor, especially the periosteal uh, covering. There may be a periosteal reaction. This periosteal reaction may be of various types. It can be interrupted or non-interrupted. What type of periosteal reaction? You then talk about the soft tissue extension of the tumor or there can be also an extension into the bone. For example, a cortical erosion uh, can be there. And then try to talk about is there any pathological fracture or other complications which is uh, seen in the next ray. And if possible, comment about a skip lesion this is the order by which you should be presenting why i st tell that you should start with an age whether it is skeletally mature patient or skeletally immature patient because see uh, uh, assume there is an epiphyseal lesion an epiphyseal lesion most common epiphyseal lesion before the closure of an epiphysis is chondroblastoma and after the closure of epiphysis is going to be a giant cell tumor that is the reason why a giant cell tumor can extend in very comfortably into a metaphysis and it most commonly present as an epiphyseal metaphyseal lesion rather than being a pure epiphyseal lesion okay because it can extend simply because of the absence of the growth plate clear so that age uh, telling the age uh, and if it if you take up a malignant tumor primary malignancy of a bone if you take up in first decade the most common primary malignancy uh, of a bone is going to be an eating sarcoma in a second decade it is going to be an osteosarcoma in third decade it is going to be a giant cell tumor in fourth decade and there on uh, multiple myeloma possibility is more so telling the age whether it is a skeletally mature patient or a skeletally immature patient is of grave importance when you are describing the next coming on to the type of the bone see tumors like osteosarcoma tumors like giant cell tumor are very common in the long bone while tumors of a chondrosarcoma multiple myeloma are very common among flat bones so whether the given bone is a flat bone or a long bone okay comment about just a word about uh, uh, the nature of the bone is of uh, some significance especially when you are reading that x-ray why are we talking about the epiphyseal metaphyseal diaphyseal why you sh should say that location precisely 
as you know uh, a clear cell chondrosarcoma or a chondroblastoma a giant cell tumor are very very common among in the epiphyseal region to begin with at least but if it is going to be an osteochondroma osteosarcoma most of them are usually in the metaphyses while if it is an evening sarcoma or osteoid osteoma it is usually in the diaphyseal region so the word a cautious word about which part of the bone is actually involved is very important then coming on to the most important aspect until now you may be knowing uh, uh, why age is important why uh, the location is important everything is of uh, you know you may know this you are familiar with but borders and matrix we are not that familiar see the borders there are only three types of borders with related to a bony swelling okay the swelling or the lesion may have a classical geographical pattern as shown in this x ray a geographical pattern indicates a benign process if there is going to be a moth eaten pattern that indicates a likely malignant process if it is going to be a permeative ill defined lesion then the lesion being aggressive or malignant is very 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 uh, uh, high chance that being a aggressive or a malignant tumor with related to uh, if you want to see those matrix i can say look here the you could see the borders very clearly that uh, this area is completely normal this area is completely normal the borders are very very clear so this is usually a benign lesion but here you could see a multiple moth eaten like appearance okay and these multiple moth eaten like appearance shows that this may not be that benign the possibility of being malignant is quite high and if you look into this area there is something pathological running but i cannot say where exactly it is all happening i can say uh, i can say uh, uh, approximately that things are going wrong somewhere in the metaphyses but i cannot marge, uh, uh, delineate the uh, tumor or the lesion very clearly so this is what called as a permeative border the third one uh, being malignant is very very high chance and coming on to uh, the matrix as in this slide if you see a chondroblastic tumor will have an annular popcorn matrix or a comma shaped matrix while an osteoplastic tumor will have a fluffy cotton and cloud like densities uh, as uh, shown in this slide okay so the possibility of this being chondrogenic is very high and uh, this being osteogenic is uh, the possibility is high so a comment about the matrix if you could able to tell will definitely be of uh, uh, will give a better impression about your knowledge to the examiners and then comes the most important periosteal reaction a periosteal reaction is two types it could either be an interrupted or an uninterrupted periosteal reaction uninterrupted periosteal reaction says that it is a benign lesion if it is an interrupted periosteal reaction then the possibility of being malignant is high even in an interrupted the interrupted periosteal reaction as shown in this slide can be a perpendicular periosteal reaction it can be a lamellated it can be a cordman triangle to the long axis of the bone if the periosteal reaction is going perpendicular so that is what giving the classical appearance of sunburst appearance in an osteo uh, uh, sarcoma as in case of the same osteosarcoma when it is creating that sunburst appearance it is trying to lift the periosteum at the end, uh, edges a uh, tail periosteum from the top of bone so it gives a classical cordman triangle appearance that again is a classical feature of a osteosarcoma the same osteosarcoma but the periosteal reaction again being interrupted in other axis for example uh, uh, it can be a lamellated multiple periosteal reaction happening one over the above a lamellated periosteal reaction or an onion skin pattern periosteal reaction is seen that is usually a classical uh, feature of an evening sarcoma so whenever a periosteal reaction is interrupted the possibility of being malignant is high if you want to see an example look into this slide uh, uh, here you can see uh, very comfortably that the first slide shows a completely uninterrupted periosteal reaction so what does it say it's a benign process and it is none other than the osteoid osteoma but if you take up the second one uh, set of images that shows a 
interrupted periosteal reaction especially where the periosteal reaction is happening perpendicular to the long axis of the bone so giving the classical sunburst appearance and in the edges you could see a small cordman triangle here cordman triangle these are all the sunburst appearance and in the last set you could see a multiple lamellae something like that a multiple lamellae of periosteal reaction very classical this is happening at the cortical level especially in the diaphysis so this possibly being an evening sarcoma is very high then it is better if you could able to comment about the soft tissue infiltration uh, even in the last uh, uh, slide of an osteosarcoma you could say the swelling and the periosteal reaction is expanding much into the soft tissue and even in this case uh, a lesion from the uh, clavicle where uh, it is expanding itself uh, uh, into the soft tissue so if you could able to comment about the soft tissue it is well and good and then never ever forget if uh, to look for a pathological fracture and uh, to search for the skip lesions in the given x-ray and look for any multiple lesions those things are very very important so whenever this x-ray is given to you an x-ray of this simplicity for it is very classically a third year mbbs graduate uh, uh, mbbs fellow can very easily say that this is a case of an osteosarcoma but from an orthopedician end when we are asking you to read this x-ray we won't expect that uh, abrupt answer like it's a case of an osteosarcoma no we would like the presentation to go in this way it should go like it is an x-ray of a skeletally met immature patient showing the distal femur proximal tibia and the knee joint a long bone femur okay so i'm telling the long bone femur okay then i could see a lesion which is arising from the metaphysis with a permeative border and an osteoblastic fluffy matrix and an interrupted perpendicular periosteal reaction showing a characteristic sunburst appearance and a cordman triangle at the above and there is an expansion to the soft tissue and the x-ray is inadequate to comment about the skip lesion so when examiner is asking read this x-ray it should be like it's an x-ray of a skeletally immature patient showing the long bone femur and proximal tibia along with a knee joint i could able to see a lesion arising from the metaphysis of the femur and the tumor is having a permeative border and osteoblastic fluffy uh, matrix which is surrounded by a periosteal reaction and the periosteal reaction is interrupted with a perpendicular appearance giving the characteristic sun ray appearance sunburst appearance and a cordman triangle and this tumor is expanding into the soft tissue and i couldn't elicit any skip lesion and the x-ray i feel is inadequate to comment about the skin lesion or multiple lesions which is occurring in the same bone so that's how you must be presenting a x-ray of a bony lesion thank you